welcome, you're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Horror, sadness and desperate hopes of returning home someday. This is how most of the survivors describe the greatest massacre of the Jewish people during World War II by the Nazi regime. The Holocaust was the systematic, bureaucratic, state-sponsored persecution and murder of six million Jews by the Nazi regime and its collaborators. To enlighten us more about this tragic event, we're joined in the studio today by Vyacheslav Likachev. He is a member of the expert committee at the Babin Yar Museum. Hello and thank you for coming. Good morning. So, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people and actually a lot of historians say that Holocaust was the Jewish tragedy, but it was not and it, it is not and it will never be the Jewish problem. What do you think of that? I agree and I'm not sure that uh, we could speak about Holocaust in terms of Jewish strategy. It was a European strategy, it was a world strategy, it was the yeah. strategy of uh, humanity. So it is not the Jewish problem, of course, because it is not Jews who faced with these um, tragic pages of history. It is the European nations who faced it and who mm -hmm. need to remember about it and who need to reflect about it. In what way could we reflect? Especially Ukraine. Because Europe clearly, uh, clearly has uh, commemorating events. We also have commemorating events, but somehow even I feel that this tragedy is being a little downplayed, starting from school years. It is not a static situation. It is a dynamic process, and in Ukraine also. Mm -hmm. uh, I honestly think that during last years Ukraine made uh, large steps in a way for uh, commemoration and for uh, reflection of the Holocaust strategy. Of course, because of partly because of the Soviet heritage, mm -hmm. because during Soviet period it was a total silence and a lie about the Jewish strategy in an um, official discourse and partly because of bureaucratic and um, not simple social situation after the uh, Ukrainian independence, uh, Holocaust uh, had not find yet its uh, place in a Ukrainian historical memory, in a Ukrainian identity. It need to be a part of the uh, identity of the Ukrainian nation if Ukraine want to be a part of Europe because it is uh, one of the fundamental parts of the European values. Mm -hmm. The lessons of Holocaust, the reflection of Holocaust is very important for uh, contemporary European identity and it needs to be also important for the Ukrainian one. What should ordinary Ukrainians do to keep the tragedy of Holocaust a part of Ukrainian identity? Because clearly government uh, can do something, uh, historians can do something, museums can do something. What do ordinary people of Ukraine need to do? I think it is not the uh, question of ordinary peoples, because the historical memory, it is not the thing that, um, it is not something natural in uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It is something which could be constructive, it could be uh, created by the uh, state uh, governed, uh, government uh, ruled mechanisms like schools, like education, because of course people themselves c could tell their uh, children something from the family member, mm -hmm. because uh, in Ukraine strategy of Holocaust was the local strategy and in every city in every town, in every village even, there is a place where massacre um, was, was done, occurred, and it is a part of a landscape, it is a part of the family memory also. Mm -hmm. But it was more than 75 years ago, so it is not so now the a real... probably third generation by now. Right. I think um, I think more fourth generation if we speak fourth. about children or youth. Mm -hmm. So it is not uh, what uh, natural uh, on a natural way exists in a people's memory. Mm -hmm. But historical memory it is something which created by um, uh, systematic mechanisms 
we don't we remember what we um, have to remember according to their um, school curriculum, mm -hmm. according to their cultural politics, according uh, to their values, which are important for our society. So I think the, uh, this work is too, uh, need to be too systematically and too long term mm -hmm. to be made <clears throat> by ordinary people. It is really something which government and society together need to work on in long-term distance. It looks like they're already working because uh, last year the commemorating events of uh, the massacre and the tragedy in the Bobby Yar, it was more noticeable than in the previous years. So this is the start, right? And uh, obviously it's gonna, <clears throat> it's gonna take decades uh, before the process is fully implemented, but could we say that there is an actual end to this process? That one day we all can say, okay, we're done with implementing the Holocaust tragedy into the uh, minds of Ukrainians, or is it a never-ending story? I actually don't think that um, events, commemorational events uh, that occurred uh, last year in uh, Babi Yar uh, was the first step. It was one of the steps, mm -hmm. but Ukraine began this way uh, after the um, ring of independence. Uh, but it was a very important symbolic point of a new level of understanding, reflection, and world, working right? about uh, this strategy for the whole world and for the Ukrainian society also. Well. And I really think that during the last three, four years, because of internal Ukrainian reasons, Ukrainian society came more closer to understanding of the importance of the tragedy of Holocaust because we have our own tragedy now. Because now we have better understanding how the World War II began, because we see it now in our news every day. Um, but uh, was... back to your question, I really don't think that there is a point where we can say, okay, we done what should be done and now it's okay. Because um, looking to the European example, looking to the Israeli example, looking to the United States example, we can see that this process is very uh, dynamic. There are changes, there are new levels of understanding, new levels of reflection and it looks more like never-end process than a point or some level we need to appear in mm -hmm. and say, okay, we've done everything. Okay, um, concerning the fact that um, Holocaust it was a page of history and is a page of history already, what lessons could we take from that tragedy concerning the situation Ukraine is in these days? The whole world learned the lessons of Holocaust every day during the last 70 years. The system of um, world collective security, the United Nations institutes, their system of education all over the world have learned lessons of Holocaust. And it is also actually for the, for the Ukrainian situ situation where we do need to learn those lessons for our own and for our future. Mm -hmm. But what is uh, became very actual and maybe painful, or at least problematic during last years, uh, when we again appeared in a situation when a great power uh, wants to begin a war to annex new territories. It's we're talking about really Crimea, right? About Russia right about annexing Crimea first and first about starting Georgia hybrid. in and 2008. Ossetia, yes, ten years ago, Russia now land grabbed South Ossetia, and I'm just saying this for our audience. In 2008, uh, Russia land grabbed Georgia's uh, South Ossetia and Abkhazia, and in 2014, clearly, as you might already know, Russia illegally annexed Crimea and uh, now is pursuing with a hybrid war in Donbass. So it is um, the situation which is not, of course, uh, there is not a direct analogy, mm -hmm. but of course, of course yes. we um, 
have um, made a link to the situation but of still, 1930. Yes, there is a great part, a nation that thinks that somehow it's better than the others and trying to invade those just because uh, that country actually thinks that it's superior. So what should the world do in this situation not to let that happen again? After the World War I, uh -huh. the system of League of Nations was created to prevent new military conflicts all over the world. Mm -hmm. And after less than 20 years, the world appeared again in a strategy um, with, um, uh, with in a great all over the world um, uh, level. Mm -hmm. And the uh, mechanism of security, mechanism of League of Nations, became totally uh, useless in this situation. After the World War II, the world uh, learned this lesson. The system of United Nations was created, but, and, it, and it works for, for decades, it works. Okay. Uh, but now we again appeared in a situation where existing mechanisms is useless and non-effective to prevent new tragedy and not only around Russia and because of Russia, but in Syria also, yeah. in other parts of the world also. And we remember that 20 years uh, ago it was a uh, uh, tragedy of genocide in Rwanda mm -hmm. and again mechanisms of United Nations appear to be useful. So I think the most important lesson remembering the tragedy of Holocaust for um, nowadays is uh, that we need to change our uh, system, our mechanisms of worldwide security to prevent new tragedy, to stop the aggression in Crimea, in Georgia, in eastern Ukraine, to stop the tragedy in Syria, in other parts of the world. Uh, we need to make changes, mm -hmm. we need to be uh, flexible, we need to be ready to respond to the um, new situation, the new context. Yes, right. And I think it is the most important lesson remembering the tragedy of Holocaust during World War II in connection of contemporary situation, which is extremely important for Ukraine today. Thank you so much. Thank you for enlightening me and our audience and thank you for your finding time and coming. Thank you. That was Vyacheslav Likachev. He is the member of the expert committee at the Bobby Yar Museum. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.